everyone, it's Lolita. This is the video for the tonal drawing of the last project of the semester, the portrait in charcoal. I hope you guys had a great time and learned a lot. Thanks, bye. Got all of my uh, pencils over here and I've got this willow charcoal. And so I'm going to shade my paper gray. I've already done some pre-marking here. You see I've taped off my 11 by 14 inch white paper. And I'm going to use the five by seven inch rectangle since it's going to be a frontal portrait. And I'm gonna use the, uh, and I'm just going to buff that down into the paper and try to get it as even toned as possible. But I'm not going to get too, too caught up in how even I can get the tone because it's uh, I can I can even that out in the drawing process, getting it more even with doing additive and subtractive. So I think I still do want it just slightly darker than this. So I'm going to go back in and tone this a little more. I hope I'm not filming in slow motion. Looks like there's just a slight delay because I'm looking at, I'm shooting this with my GoPro but I'm using the uh, app, the GoPro app on my iPad. So that is, uh, that's gonna be toned enough and I'm just going to, gives me those basic proportions we're working with. Okay, and then I'm gonna go halfway through here. So this is my halfway point on uh, and this is where the uh, eyes are going to be right along, along somewhere along here let's see four right there and then let's see four okay yeah, so somewhere in there I'm just going to uh, make that line a little straighter and this is going to be where the eyes are this is uh, if we use that circle and an oval method where we've got a circle and then an oval inside the circle That'll help with the uh, basic guideline of the face. And uh, in order for this to work, when you're looking at yourself, look at where your brow bone is and where the top of your ears are and try to get that to line up as much as possible. This is about halfway through, again, these two spaces and this is about where the bottom of the nose is going to be. And then using the cannon, this is about where the midline of the lip is going to be. So now I'm going to get a little bit more specific and start drawing my actual features in here. And uh, So first I'm going to do that by just roughly sketching in the, uh, the features, just sketch in a general sense of an eye, an eye along that line. Do a little bit of measurement, see if I've got a, uh, 
the size right. Yeah, that's about right, and that's going to give me about the right amount on the sides to where the approximate um, measurement is where you have an eye length space between the eyes and then an eye length space between the edge of the eye and the edge of the face. So you hypothetically, you can have one, two, three, four, five eye measurements across and uh, that is the basic proportions of the face. This is going to go down um, again the uh, <clears throat> The basic shape of the nose does come down where you have a four planes that you deal with, the front, the bottom, and then the sides, and they act something in a triangular type of fashion. This is about where the bottom of that nose is going to be. Going down and through here, we'll have the uh, mouth somewhere in here. And the uh, bottom of that mouth and through here the ball of the chin will come in through here and then I'll modify it to make it more uh, specific to the person I'm drawing which happens to be me so I'm doing a self portrait here starting to look at the uh, eye so I've switched from the GoPro back to the iPad and I feel like I've gotten a better uh, mount position for my iPad. So moving forward with this drawing, I um, have already plotted out the, uh, the basic little rectangle with the proportions of seven, I used a seven to five ratio, but I used the uh, measurements six and a quarter by eight, um, yeah, six and a quarter by eight and three quarters. So that's the measurement of my rectangle here. I subdivided it, have the eyes in the middle, the nose about where the halfway point would be with what's left and the midline of the mouth, right about where the uh, first one third line would be and then the ball of the chin right where the second third line would be and then the bottom of the chin is the one, two, three, um, dividing that into three uh, thirds rather what, with what's left of that. And now I'm going to uh, go in and be a little more um get specific about the features and that's what i'm doing in here right now i um i did mention that your eye your ear should be about here but i had also mentioned in one of my uh previous videos that my ears are a little on the small side so you do wind up customizing things like that um when you get into doing the actual features and all of those lines can be buffed out right into the face so i'm going to just buff out the circle now buff out those lines buff out the uh all of those measurement lines and just let them drop into the background just where they actually belong you see how easy that was and i'm going to go ahead and buff out my rectangle now also, since I've got my basic measurements happening here, I don't really want that to be in my final drawing. And with the willow charcoal, that's just really super, super forgiving. So it allows me to buff that out, just really nice. And all of these uh, things that I'm even drawing now, all the features, they're going to allow me to buff them out really nicely too. And then I'm gonna go back in and detail them, put them in detail with the uh, charcoal pencils. So again, just uh, going in through and plotting out where the, uh, where the features are going to be. I'm getting into this drawing. You can, uh, you can also do this, like if you wanted to, you could do a plot them out with your eraser. But since I went in with the willow charcoal, that really allows it to, uh, to be more of an additive thing than a additive and reductive at this point and I'll probably wind up doing more additive because of my uh, brown skin. So that's going to go in there. This goes in about right here like this. My forehead goes up like this. The uh, I've got and what I'm doing right now is similar to the planar study where I'm plotting out the planes 
and my head and those are like you can think of like when we were doing objects that weren't humans like ourselves that those were more think of them as the um, value shapes so I'm just looking at the where the planes shift where the value changes where it goes from dark to light in certain areas of my face and that is what um, the plane defines the planes in my head. It's kind of up like this, goes across like this. You know, if you uh, wind up not necessarily feeling the uh, the entire circle and measurements, don't worry about that. You because these are just they're for a guideline just to give you a like a basic framework for you to start within and a and a process for you to follow so that way you're you're going to get a lot closer to accurate than just trying to throw features just anywhere you feel like they belong this gives you some guidelines about like where you can expect to see planes shift and um where you can expect to uh, have your features land and it's going to give you again just um, these are the basic proportions of a any given human face but you will um, customize it more to what your face actually looks like so you can go back in and uh, just make it more specific individualize it or individuate it as the way I like to think of it. Um, looks like I got something in my eye. Okay, these are going to be a lot smaller. This comes in through there like that. Got a line going in through like this. It goes flat in through here. And I'm just, you know, I'm doing something of a modified planar drawing and it's going, it'll get, um, it'll look nicer than this. My jaws are wider than that little oval, so I'm going out here and just looking at where it goes across like this, there's this like this, and I uh, going across like this, I've got a little fold, this comes in through here like this, and a little wider in through here. There's that, that little fold there, and this goes out like that, and comes in like this. Again, with my, uh, got a little short neck, but I still have those uh, sternomastoids still go down like this, and in through here, sternomastoids, and the trapezius muscles come down in through here like this and it meets about in through here I've got my uh, that goes in through like that and um, that looks pretty good in through here this is a little less wide in here moves over like this and again with I uh, like to keep my hair up pulled back this goes flat in through here pulled back in through there let's see looking at that space just gauging this comes over here down like this, over here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to uh, take a little break. All right, I'm back. And looking at the actual measurement of my uh, features, I'm noticing that mine don't follow the canon, but again, it gave me a really good place to start. So. Looking at my features, my eyes are actually wider apart than one uh, 
one eye width. So I'm going to place my eyes out here and then so push them out here and then also the distance between the side of my eye and the side of my face is also less than one eye length. So I'm going to again push this out here and pushing it out there is also at the same time going to uh, push it a little closer to the side of the head. So I'm going to start it at about right here instead and go out about to here and then about half an eye length there. And this is where I'm going to be uh, changing the contour of what I already have here. Looking at this, this goes up fairly um, flat. This comes over like this. My head is a little more narrow in here and it goes over to the side and does this little uh, flat type of uh, motion going over here. So this goes over here and this is going to come down a lot closer over here. It moves down and this is the, uh, that jaw bone there and it comes in through here. And uh, I've got a sh shadow underneath here. This still moves here from here this goes around does a little like that and then this still comes over here this comes and ties into here this ties in just a little lower like this moves like this this comes over like this i've got a little this comes does this this moves out a little further here and flat in through here, still here. This is going to move a little lower down here, give myself a little more room on that chin, bigger chin than I've got described here. Looking at this, uh, goes down like this. I can make my nose a little wider it's going to come down and through here and this has a couple different planes there a slight side and then the dip of my the start of the eye socket that comes in through here it comes down like this this does go here comes around like this and this is about this is about right and through here that looks pretty good this is flat and through here moves in through here this is going to be parallel to this one it should be a little higher like maybe there and there and then it comes down here to the side like this And I was quiet there for a while so I could look at the shape of my face just a little better now that I'm drawing my shoulders that's going to be fine to uh, blab my mouth just a little more this moves in through here a little in through here and uh, okay that looks uh, that looks a little better. This is still a little too high over here. This is I've got some curls here and some curls hanging down here. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, make these features where they're a little more detailed. I'm going in with the uh, pencil now. I can't really read what this one is anymore. It uh, looks like it's an HB hard. So let's see how that works for me for right now. It's a little harder than I want to deal with. So I'm going to go in with the 4B soft. That 
if you're in my beginning art class that is in your kit. So I like drawing in eyes first for some reason. Probably a lot of you um, do find yourself compelled to look at eyes. That's to me like holds a part of the key to getting the likeness of a person is getting the shape of those eyes. So I like doing that even if it means I'm even when I'm drawing myself. So that goes in there like that. This goes a little flatter down and this probably goes a little flatter in through here like that. Got an eyelid flattens out in through here. This is probably a little too long and that's going to be okay. I'll, uh, I still have some sanguine on my blending stump from before so I'm just buffing this out some of that line with the uh, with the blending stump just going in and spreading some of this around already to play with the value structure getting it darker in there darker in through here this is all goes into shadow it comes down here into shadow this whole eyelid is really in shadow too, and then it comes out of shadow there um, above the eyelid. I like, I've got some wrinkles in here. Yep, yep. Sign of living a long, wonderful, good life. This is all dark in here, so let's get that nice and dark in there already. Shade that in a little. This is dark in down through here, all dark in here. Let's see, so now I'm going to go over and I know I want to have the middle of these on the same plane and I have already got that horizontal plane established. This dip, this particular eye dips a little below that horizontal plane. Let me look at my um, my ruler again and make sure that I have those on the same plane. So yeah, that starts and ends, so I just need to make sure I don't dip too far below and keep what I'm doing above that line. So I'm gonna just go in there and smudge that out so I uh, don't um, mislead myself. Going in here. And there's that darkness. This elongates, goes out to a point, and is flat in through here. Goes around as sort of an almond type of shape, looking at the relative proportion of my eyeball, looking at the, um, thinking of it as negative space. You know, we've been through that and looking at the white of my eye as a negative space and the black of the uh, iris as positive shape. That's another really good way to analyze it and just looking at that white and making sure that shape is the uh, same shape as the actual opening in the eye. This does come up and through here, flattens and squeezes a little bit in through here, it's flat in through here, and moves down in like that, and I'm going to get up and look at it from a distance to see if I feel like those are uh, on the same plane. Maybe look at it again with uh, the ruler, see if I, uh, I got those on the right plane. I think that I still got a little too low. Am I looking at that parallel? So yeah, I'm going to bring this up a little. Do I have that flat? Let's see. I'm going to put it flat to uh, the side of my paper. 
so I get a uh, more accurate idea of what the true horizontal is that I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that feels a little more balanced. It's it's not quite as off as I thought it was. And then this is going to be uh, thinner in through here. It does move in over here like this. hair piled up there. My uh, ear is about right here. It bows out just slightly from here. I've got a slight bow where the uh, zygomatic is. The, uh, the cheekbone comes down in through here and got like that little flap of ear here and it goes out like this and Pitches back in like this and goes back up into my hairline. Gets lost in there. And this does come down in through here. So let's see. Analyzing myself again. That feels about right. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in uh, this so I get like that value balance that I'm looking for and see if it uh, affects my perception of what I'm drawing. Going in here and already playing again with the idea of a little bit more shading in through here, the uh, pushing that in to start developing the value structure of the face. This is darker in here, so I'm just going to push some of this value out into the surrounding area and then also get rid of that heavy outline around my eye at the same time. And putting the, uh, doing a little bit of drawing with the blending stump. This does come in through here and I, this is all in deeper shadow in here, all of the side of the nose and deeper shadow in here, this and through this space. All of this is going to be in deeper shadow over on this side of the face. And I'm pushing this all into shadow. What I'm gonna do is see if I can push some of that, just get some of that darker work down into the, uh, the paper. I think what I'm going to do is start going in with my uh, my pencils because they're going to give me more of the deeper value that I'm looking for and they don't brush or buff out quite as much as the uh, the willow charcoal but now that I feel like I've got the uh, features where I want them to be I can go in and put them in with a little more confidence with the uh, charcoal pencils are a little more, definitely more permanent than the than the willow charcoal going in here establishing that bottom of the nose coming back in through here the nostril goes up they aren't really circles so keep that in mind and then they're they are somewhat circular so you still want to keep in mind the idea of drawing them as with the same consideration for circle and perspective as you would with a cylinder because they are cylindrical in nature so you want to keep that in mind while you're uh, while you're doing your drawing so those nostrils wrap around down there on the bottom like that this is uh, that little part of the in between of the nostrils. This comes down and it's a little more shaded like this. And that side of the nose is a little flatter in through here. It's cast a shadow over like this. I'm gonna go in and steal some of that darkness to push it around 
down here to get more of a uh, darker value structure in here. And again, just using that to tone the paper around where I'm drawing, get it toned a little darker. Because uh, for um, the values I'm looking for the in my drawing, the vine charcoal, the willow charcoal, just didn't really get as dark as I'm looking for. So I'm just using the dark of the pencil now and smudging that around so that I get a really nice, good value structure in my uh, drawing. But I still have, you know, the nice gray tone of the uh, of the tone paper from the vine charcoal. So I'm just going in through here and toning my paper. I haven't really lost the lines that I'm working with in the face, so I still have that established to a certain degree. This goes in through here, and this is about where a divot in above the lip is. Again, with the lip line in through here, oh, this is a 6B, so that's a little softer than I want to work with. I'm going to go back in with the 4B. I've got that lip line established here, so I'm uh, going to be quiet, and then I'll talk over this, uh, record over this. All right, now I'm uh, back shading other parts of the face. I, uh, and I decided I'm not quite ready to do the mouth yet. I, uh, I like to jump around quite a bit when I'm doing my drawings. I'm gonna just go in here and shade this all up darker because it all needs to be darker than what I was able to establish with my willow charcoal. So that's also why I stopped doing the uh, the mouth because I want all of this in here darker so I can play with the uh, doing both additive and reductive while I'm shaping the mouth and so I'm going in here with more value from my uh, charcoal pencil and then just shading in all of this side of the face too with the charcoal pencil because it's going to uh, give me a deeper shading than I'm that I'm looking for. And since I've got brown skin, my overall I'm going to be a little uh, have a deeper value to my skin than I put down here already. So this is just a little too light for my particular skin tone because I've got a, uh, a deeper tone than I started my, uh, my tonal drawing with. All right, so I'm just going back in and uh, reestablishing these details. 
now that I've buffed them out. And so this is a, um, doing a lot of additive in here. And I'll, uh, when I buff that down, I'll, I'll be doing a little bit more of a subtractive in there too. So this, I, uh, I wanna go out further than I've got here. Little, little father. And It looks like I have a mustache right now, but I assure you when I buff this out, it will get, it will get rid of that feeling. So I'm going to buff all of this out because I want to be all darker in here. This in here on the side of the bridge of the nose. This goes darker down in here. It actually doesn't go quite like that in through there, a little darker in through here, dark in through here. Just establishing that back where I had seen it before, so even though I'm talking, I'm just putting it back where I had seen it and that's going to go there. This comes down in through here. This is actually a little higher. It ties in about right there. This goes down like this, around here like this, comes down. And you see I'm plotting out the uh, the shadow shapes in my in my face again with the uh, pencil here that goes across like this. This comes down a little lower in through here and does that little thing in through there. This is and then this is where my neck meets. This comes down in this little darker in through here. So again, um, that uh, the circle and the oval is just a general guideline, and even the uh, five by seven ratio is just a general guideline. And you'll see that you might have to go outside of those measurements in order to make it look a little more like your actual face. So um, you know. Again, just use that as a general guideline, not as if it's the law and that is the only measurements it could possibly be because that's just not the truth. That's not how that works. So um, let's see, this feels like it's just still a little too close over there. Um, feels like I don't have enough room to uh, make the uh, shapes in my face the uh, measurements that they actually should be. And this comes down and goes around like this. 
Yeah, so this needs to move over just a little. So I'm going to buff that out and get it moving over just a little more. So this comes in through there and that does that. And then there's a little bit more of a shadow in through here. This does come in here and goes around like this and then it leaves that space in there for the nose and the uh, slope as it goes in through the cheek. This comes down like this and then that's going to uh, put this eye out just slightly over here. Let's see, I've got that room there and then the fatty tissue of the eye, the uh, this comes in through about here and flattens out through here. So then that's going to put this here and this in like this. And then that's about where the, uh, the tear duct of that eye is. It does flatten a little bit more in this direction. And so then that's going to put that eyeball out over there. And it's about that size. And then it goes out over here and curves back down. And this goes up and pinches off over there. Let's look. Okay, that looks, uh, that looks okay. If I'm looking at that, I feel fairly comfortable with where that eye is located. It does flatten out in through here and here. Then there's that eye socket. goes up like this over and comes down over here and this is darker over here. So I'm just going to start shading that in a little darker. This comes down over here. Shade that in a little darker. It moves from about right here through here and comes back in over there. There is that and this goes down like this and again with the eye socket going about in through here. This flattens out over here. This is the top of that, that cheekbone. It gets a little lighter in through here as it rounds over comes down and then does this again with the uh, triangular kind of shape. The cheek breaks in through here, goes like this. I've got a little rounded and a triangle form in there. This moves up. There's that muscle in there and goes down and forms the this comes here side and goes back out just a little and goes in through here. And so then I've got a little more volume in through here that I can describe with my face, get that a little wider again. And uh, just go in there and buff that out. And so now I've got the uh, couple planes there in my the side of my face described and I've got a nice uh, darker tone to my skin than the uh, light tone that I had established with the willow charcoal. And so that's going to give me some room to go down here and get all of this darker in here too. I'm, uh, and that's gonna just help me with the value structure. Looking in through here, this is going to be darker in here. Let's see if that that feels okay. This does come down.
right, going back in and uh, like I said, buffing some of that out so it won't look so much like a mustache. And let's see, going here and through here. This is darker flat and through here. And it rolls down and through here like this. And this is out here. Leads up and through there. Go in and do a little bit of a cast shadow underneath the uh, chin. Shape up that a little bit. I'm just going in there with my 4B. And I do have, um, so even if this, I need to adjust this later, I'm going to be able to go back in and uh, modify that line again through the either the additive or reductive process. Taking this down a little, um, defining this jawline a little bit more with an outline, and then I'm going to blend that back in in this direction so it doesn't stay so outliney, but still keeps a nice strong edge because that is a uh, strong edge in through there. The uh, it denotes a strong drop between the plane and then the next plane that you see because the uh, there's nothing pressed up against my face. So that's why you wind up seeing that really super strong edge in there. And then just even taking that and uh, using it to bring that, that overall tone of the paper in that area down to a deeper value that's going to be more in line with the values in my face. Taking that down. So in, again, you can see how just buffing that out, it it's going to allow me to go in there and if I needed to adjust the uh, contour of my chin, I've got plenty of, of room to do it. So even though I've drawn it in there before, it you can always go back in and always should go back in and fine tune these things out. So again, with just a little bit, adding a little more uh, definition to the edge, adding a little more definition to this edge here. And uh, and here's my shirt goes in about, about right here. And I can still, I've got plenty of room to just take that. And I still have that strong edge and blending it into the uh, inwards. So I don't have such a strong outline effect. And, but I still wind up getting a uh, nice crispy edge without having that whole super strong outline. And again, I've got plenty of room to go in darker in here darker in here to shape that uh, that neck just a little and get them to t take a better spatial relationship between uh, the two surfaces. This is plenty in here I can go around like this and then I've got uh, plenty of room to go in and go darker in on this shoulder in through here and then just that's just allow, allowing more medium down on there to get more of help darken this whole area up in here again because like I said the uh, the value from my from the willow charcoal just doesn't keep up with the value in my skin I'm, all right so that uh that's getting a little closer now I'm going to go back in and start working the uh, eye area a little bit more again. And I'm putting this paper towel over there so I don't do uh, too much smudging. So going in here, this is uh, darker in here. I've got that HB pencil because I'm uh, not quite 
ready to do a full on commitment to too much darkness. And, um, but I also, you know, so, cause I know I can buff this out a little bit and, uh, it's not gonna be too dark because it's that HB going in shading a little bit of this. This is, it's that's darker than I want it to be, but I'm not gonna worry about it because again, I'm gonna go in there and get a lot of that when I uh, press it into the paper. Some of it's going to come off of the uh, paper and onto the surface of whatever it is I'm buffing it out with, so I'm not gonna worry about going in too dark too much. All right, and now I'm just going in and playing with the value structure and the nose to get a little bit more of a uh, sense of a volume happening in through there. Again, with this going down in there, this is all darker in here, darker in here. And then just playing with those relative tones in the face to get the idea of volume happening in there. Got room to go much darker in here. Out through here, this and here. Put in my little uh, scowl marks. This is all darker in through here, darker in through here. And even darker in through here. Everything's all darker in through here with the exception of the ball of my nose. This is going to be darker in through here, a little darker in through here, and then I've got room to take this darker now too. And room to go darker, and I'm just going to uh, smudge some of that darkness down into there. I don't want that that high. So this is just buffing all of this down lower into the face to drop those tones down. Go back in, this is, uh, place that edge again. Place that edge again. This just goes up and a little triangular kind of shape in there. And I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna make the uh, start darkening up those eyeballs. Get that going into the proper value. This is. that into the proper value. And over here. So looking out over here, this is here, and then the side of my face is about right in through there. Looking over here, this moves down like that, and the side of my face goes here, and then this goes out a little and this is about where that, that bone is. This goes up like this, and all of this in here has a lot more value. And that's the uh, socket of my eye, the side of my face, my hairline, my top of my ear. This comes down out like this. And just uh, plotting in that ear with a value structure. This comes down and does that. I'm going to shade all of that in because all of this is just much darker. This moves in through here like this. All of this, even though my hair's got gray in it, it still uh, winds up overall being darker than my face. If I just look at the uh, idea of the structure of the value in mass, 
and I can go back in and drop some of that value, uh, lift some of that up if I want to indicate some of the gray hairs. But again, overall, right now I'm just plotting in the mass. I'm going to go back down here and uh, look at my chin and get all of this in here and go a little darker in through here where the uh, side of that face is darker in through here. And through here and get all of this shaded in a little darker in through here so I can have the value structure that I feel I need for my face it's still just overall uh, too light I'm going back in here and adding a lot more value in here. I'm doing this with that HB pencil that I have because I'm not ready to like overcommit to value. But I know I definitely need it a lot darker in here than I was able to get established with that willow charcoal going in here and dropping in some of that value that I know I need in here. A lot of value I need in here. Let's see, going up from here, this is uh, just a lot darker in through here like this. This comes in and this is darker in through here, darker in through here. I'm going to buff all of that out so I just get a smoother look overall. But now I'm just taking that value down to, oh look, lovely. Look like one of my brothers now. going back in and uh, just doing some general coloring in now that I uh, have my values just a lot closer to what I want them to be. Go back in and reestablish some of these uh, contours in here. This goes in like this goes up and comes around these just come in through here back around through here Again, with all of it in here being just much darker overall. Let's see, that goes like this. This comes in through here, and this is about where that is. I will uh, gauge all of that a little later. Go back in and start knocking out these features and getting this portrait finished up here. At some point I won't uh, make the, won't blend some of the 
dark out. I'll just leave it in the way it is. This is all darker in here. The uh, This is darker in here. and now I'm just deciding how I want to uh, get into uh, finishing this, what, uh, what techniques I want to use, how, how far I want to go with uh, shading and blending. I'm going to go in here with this lighter pencil and just reshape that eyeball and get in there and shade the bottom lid. and uh, this goes down in through here, shade the eye socket in here, this moves out a little over here again, here shading this a little bit and I'm going to blend that out with a uh, blending stump. Shading this in a little more in here because it's a. Uh, this is also in shadow more than I got it described there. So that goes around in shadow like that. This comes in through here like this. More with the eye socket. This goes down like this. This, this is all in. Uh, shadow it gets a little light in there but I can go in and play with that with the uh, an eraser after I've so I want this darker in here this comes around like this again with that the whole eye socket that it's darker down in through here go in with this light pencil in here and playing with the value structure in here go in with a uh, more of an outline type of effect in there to establish that as a deeper edge so that it will uh, allow the rest of that darkness to make a little bit more sense because everything is in fact relative and especially when it comes to tones in your face that define the uh, shape. Everything is relative with the values. If you don't get the values right, uh, then that your drawing is going to fall apart. The uh, That's the most critical thing to get right. And that's why in beginning drawing, we uh, focus on drawing only in black and white and just using a value structure to, uh, to draw with and not dealing with color yet because it's really easy to get color uh, confused with value and if you've already worked through with only value then that is less of a problem so you've already you've approached it and you're already um, get more used to evaluating the objects that you're trying to draw you're going to be evaluating them from a point of um, looking at their value structure as opposed to looking at their 
color and getting caught up in that color to uh, try to inform you because what you know that's just you know it's also the uh, like getting those proportions right if you don't get those proportions right then you wind up getting your details in the wrong place and that's just another uh, way things don't look accurate they wind up not looking like the object you're actually trying to describe that you're actually trying to draw so let's get over here and down into this side of the face that goes more like this this goes up like that this does uh over like this and this is a little on the stronger side the beauty of age is you get more character to your features all right so this is definitely where I want to get in and define edge just a little better so that way I can See what I'm actually working with in here. Again, there is a little bit more like this. This goes in like this. And this moves in and does this. this. Move this down, get a little bit more uh, volume happening in the face. Just blowing some of that darkness and pushing some of this value down in through here. And playing with the value structure in my face to get more of a sense of volume happening in there. This is still darker in through here. This actually goes down a little more, so I'm still playing with the length of my chin. And since it's all still dark in here, I can, uh, like I said, I've got plenty of room to Play with the shape of this chin in here. Now just going and and playing with it. This is darker down underneath my chin where it's deeper in shadow. This is dark here on the side of my face. in there blend that down into there let's see if I go back in and this is a little bit more like that and so then again that means I need to take my face out just a little wider and I can use this to play with that value structure and just darken all of these tones in here and uh, just a little more. These get darker in over here. I'm going to use that HB pencil. Let's see in through here. The uh, click eraser I'm going to use in through here. This is a little lighter than the rest of my face in through there. If I get a little too light, I can just take it right back down immediately by buffing it out a little more. 
goes in through, goes up in like that. And let's see, I'm going to add a little shade to the mouth in through here. And through here, this comes in like this. This is all darker in through here than the rest of the face around it. This moves in like this and out over here. bottom lip is uh, darker than the uh, rest of the face around it. This moves out a little down here like this, comes in through here. And uh, buff that back down in really quick if it uh, gets too dark. I mean, too light, rather. So that's this comes up through here. All right, so I think I can be okay with that. This in here is gets a little darker, and this is darker. This goes down like this, and gets a little darker in through here, a little darker in through here. This is a little darker in through here. All of this is a little darker in through here. And we're buffing this out to uh, let's see, a little ridge in here. This comes down like this and goes into shadow again here, over through the uh, ball of my chin. This is all of that what we describe as ball. Just shaping this. This comes down in through here and all of this down in here is in shadow again this goes in through here and let's see this actually goes out to here and comes in through here and and again i'm going to uh reshape that chin we establish that line just a little farther down here. Buff that up into there. Come back down and then I'm going to add the darkness down underneath the, the chin all over again. You know, and that's one thing that's really good about working with charcoal. It is just a really forgiving medium. You can uh, erase and add really super easy just by uh, buffing it out. I'm going to add a lot of value in through here and so I can 
get the spatial relationship of the neck and uh, the face a little more cohesive. So I'm just doing a little cross hatching in here and then I'm going to push all of that into the uh, paper with uh, paper towel. So here we go. And going back in and making it darker under the chin. Over here a little bit. Down here a little. This goes about over here. This keeps going here. All of this underneath the chin is in shadow. I can go ahead and make that all a little darker. And again, push that down into the uh, paper, darkening, darkening it up just little by little. Establishing that line again. Pushing it in with the uh, blending stump. That allows it to get pushed in a little deeper because the blending stump is a little more firm and so I'm uh, applying a lot more direct pressure to that area so it, it just pushes it in. It does a like a better physical job of pushing it in. So um, that is uh, starting to look a lot like me. And I'm just going to go in and darken it up again in certain places to try to get a little bit more of a uh, sense of volume going. And with some of this, I probably won't push it back in. This got a little too square looking in through here, so I'm going to uh, just widen that part of the face in through here and get it rounded out at the same time. I feel like that's a little too uh, strong, but as we know, we can just dilute the strength by going in there and buffing buffing that out. This needs to be a little darker in here because this is okay there. And this can be um, just a little lighter in through here. I can go in and lift some of this out and if it gets too extreme, so I'm just almost doing um, a little bit of that carving out, you know, so it's almost that, you know, like we were, uh, like the book describes where you're doing a little bit of a sculptural movement in here. So I'm just doing that and then I'm going to just go over it lightly and so it still retains a really good amount of the uh, lightening it up, but then it doesn't get too extreme and I can... Uh, push it right back down really easily just by barely going over it with the uh, with the uh, a paper towel. So going back in here, reestablishing that lip line and just shading that a little bit. This goes in and is darker in like that. This again darker and like this. This goes up a little bit there. This whole side is darker, goes up, and uh, make this uh, nostril just a little more defined. Find that edge a little more, go back in and define this edge a little more. 
and I'm just going to darken that up a little to turn that. This goes down a little darker in through here, turns that, get in through here and darken that just a little bit. Looking at the shape of this mouth in here, I think I can uh, give it a little bit more form by establishing the edge a little more strongly and through here. Then I'm going to build the uh, a little bit more form in through here by taking, I've already got some dark on my uh, blending stump so I'm just going to take what's already on my blending stump and use that to my advantage to establish a little bit more form in through here. I'm going to take all of this down darker and and again everything is relative so while that may look a little on the too dark side right now if I just blend it out a little bit and then um, I do need to uh, make some of this darker over here darker over here to uh, define the side bridge of the nose there come in through here this is all as you know going to get buffed out just a little bit more and so it's not going to be quite this extreme that in there this can go uh, darker in through there this goes down like this I've got a little bit more um, darkness that I can go in with this Put these up over there come back and establish the side of this face a little more and then taking my handy dandy uh, paper towel, buff that in a little more. This is going to be a little darker over here where this is a little, again, darker over here. I can uh, use the, take advantage of the uh, distance between my ear and the side of my face to add a little bit of extra emphasis to the shape over here with, um, I think I got a little too overzealous, so buff that out a little. And then I'm gonna take this and uh, shade the ear back here a little. And then even take some of that and push it into the side of the face to add more depth and dimension over here. This is uh, all darker in here. Darker in through here. You can go darker in through all of here. This is, you can get pushed down. Buff all of this out a little more. of the eyes are a little darker in there so we'll just push those down a little and this has a little bit more form into it here going over here this is a little darker goes darker down to there
I'm playing with the sides of the shape of the face. goes up, curls around like this. I've got a uh, got another curl coming down out around here. So I can just put that down there. Put this down here. don't have a whole lot of eyebrow. It's a 4B. So I'm going to just go in here with this. Like I said, I do have my, uh, my scowl marks where I, uh, or my reading squinting marks. Actually, they're really more squinting from squinting at uh, doing art my whole life and squinting at my drawings and my paintings to analyze that value structure is really what most of that is about and then all of that academic reading I do it uh, shows up in my uh, shows up in my features all right this is uh, my hairline is way back here up here this is where uh, My hair goes up like this, and then I've got some curls coming off over here to the side, and those are out like that. This is, uh, again, with maybe uh, establish that in there a little more. Go back in here and establish the side of the face a little more. This comes down. I will. Uh, Do that ear there. This comes out a little more here and goes in like this. And I've got lots of uh, curly hair happening over here. Come down, soften up my face. I don't look like one of my brothers anymore. Now I just look like Lolita. So, yay! Alright, this is going to be a little darker in here. I'm uh, going to go in here and mold that eye socket a little more. Going through here, this is where my brow bone is. And even though I don't have a lot of eyebrows, I still do have a brow bone. It gets darker in through here and moves up in through here, all shaded in through here. Moves in over like this, down like this. Can make this just a little wider out here and take this and move that out. I'm going to take my click eraser and lighten this up so I can get that nostril wider and then just buff it right back down and then I've got the uh, contour I feel I'm a little more comfortable with and describing myself that goes like this this gets a little bit of cast shadow in through here a little bit of cast shadow in through here and a little more cast shadow in through here. This goes, flares out a little in through here. And go darker in through here. A little darker in through here. A little darker in through here. Darker in through here. Here. Up and through here where my hairline goes up like this. And here I can just sort of suggest what's happening with my hair and let it float off into uh, sort of a vignette type of thing. So that goes up like this. There's about where my scar is and this is about where my hairline is and through here. 
and this moves up like that, comes up around like this. And this comes down in through here like this, squares out a little bit on the forehead and through here like this. Let's see if those are even. No, they're not. I'm going to bring this down a little so I've got a little more symmetry happening in my head. And take my handy dandy uh, paper towel and do a little gentle smudging up and through there. Darken this up a little more and better. Let's see if uh, that goes there, this goes here. This is actually goes out. The hairline is actually out to here and this is about where that hair falls in through here. So then that means I need to just make this a little higher. And that is, that is about right. This is, uh, so I think that is, uh, that's going to do it for this particular project. I say that, but then I see things that I want to go in and address. I, uh, I'm a little compulsive obsessive with uh, my drawings. Once I get into them, I really want to do every single detail I can possibly see. But that's not what this project is about. So I'm going to give it a rest. Maybe I will uh, go back in here and use this to put in a few of those gray hairs, but there we go, push them back. And I think I want to make that highlight just a little higher and I think I can call that a day for this portrait.